everyone, it's Danelle. Thank you so much for joining me today. We are on the third video of our pharmacology series. Finally, I'm making this video and we're going to finish out the series. Let's get started. So we always want to apply transdermal patches to hairless and intact skin. That means if you are administering a medication through a patch, which is transdermally, so it's something you stick on yourself, and it administers the medication really slowly through the skin, you want to make sure that there are no cuts or scrapes on that skin and no hair on that skin because that will impede the ability for the patch to stick. A really important medication to know is nitroglycerin. This is a medication for heart pain, for angina. And so this can come in like an oral spray form or in a sublingual tablet that you put under the tongue. So it's really important to know what some of the dangers of IV medication administration are and how to treat those dangers. So something that can happen if you have an IV medication running is something called infiltration. Infiltration is when the solution, the medication, ends up outside of the vein for whatever reason, you know, maybe you didn't get the vein, maybe it was like a little bit off, so the solution is coming outside of the vein and that can be really dangerous because it can cause swelling in the tissues surrounding the vein. How you know that infiltration is occurring is that the site is cool to the touch, so you know, that substance is outside of the vein, it's filling the tissues, it's making the tissues swell, and it feels cool. Your treatment for infiltration is to first stop the infusion, then remove the catheter, and then elevate the extremity, and use a cold or warm compress. So the cold or warm compress variation depends on which solution was administered. So it's different for everyone, but I've never seen a question that's asked specifically, you know, do you put a warm or a cool compress on this infiltration situation? So don't even worry about that. I wouldn't. So another issue with medication administration uh, through an IV is something called phlebitis. So I think of this kind of in terms of being kind of opposite to infiltration. Infiltration was cool to the touch, causes coolness to the touch, to the skin around the site. Um, usually I've seen that you use a cool compress, although you can also use a warm one, as I mentioned, depending on the solution. Phlebitis is more of like a warm thing going on. So you have a red streak up the arm, you have throbbing, you have burning at the site, and you have elevated skin temperature. So around the site, it's gonna feel warm, not cool. So phlebitis, think of warm. Infiltration, think of cool. The treatment for phlebitis generally is again, of course, stop the infusion, remove the catheter, elevate the extremity. So those three same things as you would do with infiltration, but then usually use a cold compress before you use a warm compress with the phlebitis. An important thing to note is to never discontinue a medication abruptly. I've seen this question a lot uh, for various different drugs, and usually if your answer pertains to that, to not discontinuing the drug abruptly, that's usually the correct response. So you need to know a lot of basic information about G-tubes, so I encourage you to look up all that basic information, and a really important one is to flush the G-tube with 15 milliliters of water before you administer your medications, your crush medications. So 15 milliliters, administer your medications, and then flush again with 15 milliliters. Okay, so before you go and you ace your NCLEX and your pharmacology section and you do really well studying like I know you will, I just want to go over a few kind of extra points to prepare you for what's to come on your NCLEX. So delegation is really important to know and I have a video on that, I will link that. Advanced directives are also quite crucial. How to keep patient confidentiality is really important. You want to know your priorities, your ABCs, your Maslow's hierarchy of needs. 
you want to know your lab values, definitely. That's going to answer a lot of questions. If you just know those values, just get them down. You want to know about diabetes. There are a lot of questions that could be asked about diabetes. It's a really big topic. It's a really important topic because so many people have diabetes and you know, you're going to have to know it. Go into your test feeling a sense of confidence because you will not know everything. You have to just trust that you know enough because most people who come into that test know enough. So just trust that, try to stay calm. It'll go by quicker than you think. It's not a long test. Um, and good luck.